order. We will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first item is the approval of our minutes for our regular 616-15 board meeting.
Yes. 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 We work with them. We, we work with others as well. We, uh, of course, all of our new buildings will be very energy efficient that we do here forward. And our architects are on top of all of them. All the new things we have. But the, the drill, for example, some of the things like deep fryers in the, in the uh, cafeteria, we no longer have those. We have uh, what they call combine. 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 Not only healthier, they also reduce the energy being used. So we're take a look at a lot of things. Uh, our HVAC in the high school we had an antiquated system that was uh, just a monster, just eating energy as fast as they could. You know, every time it was turned on. Now, now we have uh, energy saving individual room units uh, that, uh, where it might be uh, one compressor might be serving two rooms, uh, and so they're not on all the time, and they're very uh, high energy efficiency with a high sear rate.
because our, uh, we're not really sure exactly uh, uh, how the money uh, was increased when it happened. Uh, we're going to be looking at that after this meeting and try to find out. But uh, it's good news, I'll tell you that. And uh, we did check to make sure there wasn't a mistake in overpayment. <laughs> and, uh, you know what that means, and uh, that was not the case. So uh, uh, we're very excited about that. We'll, we'll continue to research that and see what else we can find out about that. Let me tell you about a few summer projects that we have uh, this summer in the uh, in the what we call it Tiger Cafe also known as the Barstown High School Cafeteria uh, there have been some major renovations as we all will recall the lovely 1960 green glass block uh, has been painted uh, it is a special process to paint that uh, and it looks absolutely awesome the columns have been painted and all the surrounding walls have been painted um, we also have uh, some new more modern doors uh, from 1959 uh, the current doors we have and, and they, they have served their purpose and it's time to upgrade that area uh, we're going to be able to do that about the second week of august also there'll be a new signage throughout similar to what you see behind mm -hmm. us here uh, and some other other signs that we have in some of the other buildings that follow that pattern as well and then our hall of fame uh, uh, display that we have in the, in the uh, tiger cafe will also be updated and give us some space to grow that program uh, some more. We're about to run out of space, uh, so we'll be able to have uh, at least 10 or so years uh, in advance on that particular wall and then have the other wall to work with in the future. So uh, great news about the Tiger Cafe is it's all funded by Fund 51 and not the general fund uh, through uh, uh, the food service program. So uh, very good news there. Our uh, playground at the uh, elementary school you might recall uh, back some time ago we brought that to your attention uh, we're, we're underway over there with uh, all of the old playground equipment has been removed and uh, we're about ready to do some leveling uh, the rain has been a, a, it's been a terrible year to, to build a playground or probably anything else outside for that for that matter uh, but the rain has slowed us down uh, but we're underway there just refresh your memory that that was a three-way project for the uh, Barstown Elementary PTO help fund part of that and uh, uh, we also use some general fund money on that as well as daycare has kicked in on that as well so uh, it's been a three-way project and uh, we're looking forward to getting that underway um, and then of course we had an unforeseen recently the uh, sewer line from the uh, fifth street of, uh, into uh, the high school uh, had to be replaced uh, at a cost of around four thousand dollars but uh, that's an upgrade that you'll that you won't see but certainly is necessary that's all I have on the financial report. Any questions, I'll be glad to answer those. Will the playground be completed by beginning of school? Yeah, if the weather will cooperate, that's a plan. If the monsoon <laughs> season stops, <laughs> we will have a playground. Okay. The plan was to be installing this week, but we're probably two weeks behind. But the, if, 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 just so you know, too, if replacing the playground has been here since 1994. Oh. Mm -hmm. we'll move on. Uh, along our next item is the superintendent's report. Our superintendent's report, uh, I want to share with you today. We have some folks here with us, but uh, before they get up, I want to tell you a little bit about the history. Uh, with our uh, Family Resource and Youth Service Centers. Uh, these were uh, created and enacted back in 1990 uh, in schools throughout the state of Kentucky by our Kentucky legislators uh, in the what you might recall the Historical Educational Reform Act known as CARA. Uh, and it, was a, it was a major change. Uh, that, was, that was 1990. That was 25 years ago. And we are uh, celebrating our, our 25th anniversary as a state and also we're not quite we're about five or six months away from being a total of 25 years but we're going to go ahead and call it 25 years because uh, we started our program in january which i think most people in the state of kentucky did uh, back in 1990 but it is the 25th year and uh, uh and all of the things that we experienced those of us who were here then uh, back in 90 and uh, saw that educational reform taking place all up through the 80s uh, to me, this is the single most important part of the CARE Reform Act. Uh, the whole mission of the Youth Service Center uh, is to remove barriers for learning. 
and I can tell you we have two folks with us here today, Catherine Webb and Josh Payne, who do that, that almost daily. Uh, they're unsung heroes that we seldom see the work that they do, uh, but we certainly realize it in the classroom. That they just quietly work behind the scenes and get a lot of things done. Uh, how they remove those barriers, uh, there's a number of ways they do that. They do that uh, uh, throughout the year and beginning of the year in the summer, there's really no rest for them. So, uh, Josh and Catherine, with that being said, I'm going to ask you to come forward and uh, tell us about your program. Um, uh, I, I will tell you that uh, I always get this wrong, so I'm going to look at my notes here. The Family Resource Center, uh, they serve the early childhood through the fifth grade, and the Youth Service Center, uh, they serve the sixth grade through uh, the twelfth grade. Uh, so we have a, uh, a high school unit, and then we have the, uh, our middle high school unit, and then the lower unit. and. Uh, uh, we were able to add, what's it been, two years ago? Three, two? Three or four. Yeah, then we added the second year. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And just as Josh, second year, but that's right. We did. We added about four years ago. We were able to add a second year. So, Catherine, the floor is all yours. Well, thank you for those kind words, and thank you for inviting us to share a little bit about what we've been doing. Um, our focus, the Family Resource Center, again, that serves birth through fifth grade, our focus this year has kind of shifted. You know, the need continues to increase every year, and we just have to come up with new and in innovative programming to meet that need. Um, some things increase and some things change, and so we've really been focusing this year on kindergarten readiness. Um, as you all probably remember, in January of 2014, the officer of the governor released a statement saying that about 49% of our students in the state started kindergarten ready to learn. It was a little bit higher than that here in Bardstown. It was about 63%. Um, but our focus has been last year and is continuing to be kindergarten readiness. Um, I worked with Ms. Blackman uh, when a title, the title programs were being monitored and we're just trying to make sure we get parental involvement increased and, and have proper record of that and do what we can to help um, families feel like they are prepared for their kindergarten, kindergarten students to come to school. And so this summer I hosted a program um, called Passport to Learning. And it was for families, um, not just in the city school system, but also in the county school system, who have children birth to five. Um, it was a week-long program. Uh, the families who participated were with us two hours a day. First they participated in our summer feeding program and, and um, had a meal together. And then uh, they came back to the elementary school and um, we had a music time with Carmel Bowman. And I don't know if any of you know Carmel Bowman, but she is outstanding. And I think that was probably the kids' favorite part and parents too. Um, and then we had the, the parents and the children split up. And our focus was um, the parent guide from the, um, the governor's office of early childhood. And there are five components in that uh, parent guide, social and emotional development, general knowledge and mathematics, health and physical well-being, approaches to learning, and language and communication development. So each day we took one of those components and focused on it. And myself, along with four other um, coordinators, uh, hosted each day and gave parents information on how they can get their child ready within that component. And while the children, the parents were learning, the children were um, learning activities that were also related to that component. Then they came back together and the, the goal was for students to then teach their parents what they've been learning. And it was a big success. We had about 16 families who came. We had about 40 who signed up, but we had about 16 who came. Um, and it, it was really a great program that we did in July, the first week of July. Our partner uh, was the Nelson County Early Childhood Council, and they were able to pay for two early childhood assistants to come and assist us with that. Um, and then also the Family Resource and Youth Services Center coordinators from Nelson County. Um, I developed the program to incre increase kindergarten readiness and offer our parents the opportunity to participate in a program similar to the Toyota Born Learning program that some of you may have heard about. Um, the county was awarded a Toyota Born Learning um, grant last year. There are three of them that are going to be in the county. And we applied and we were not selected. However, I got a call yesterday that we have been selected. So that is great news. We're going to have $5,600 to implement the program over the next two years. And this is a year-long program. There will be about seven sessions for parents and their children to attend in the evening. And it really is just a teachable moments program. Parents will come in and have uh, sit down to dinner with their children and we'll help kind of model how that works because not all families are able to sit down and eat together. And then um, again, the parents will split off and learn some um, skills that they can use to help their children be kindergarten ready and the kids will play and then they'll come back together and, and model those skills together. 
Um, and so the, the grant will pay for a facilitator, for childcare, for those meals, um, those seven nights that we do the program in the evening. And it will take place at the primary school because the goal is for the child to be ready and familiar with the school they're gonna attend in kindergarten. So we're really excited that we were able to receive that grant and um, we look forward to working with the county coordinators too and, and making sure that more learning is a big success in both the city and the county. So that's kind of been our focus. And of course the, the same uh, programs that we've been doing all along, we're still doing. Today we were at Walmart this morning doing the Bounce Back to School program and helping about 30 families with new uniforms. Um, and we just keep on going. You all have any questions about the Family Resource Center? How many kids do you take care of during the year? I would say that our services touch every student because we don't just, um, you know, our funding is based on our free and reduced lunch count, but we, we provide programming for every student. Um, Mr. Payne provides uh, anti-bullying programming and um, lots of other stuff that I'm sure that he's going to talk about. And then I do a lot of um, bullying program in the classroom and other, you know, other, great, we, we touch every student, I would say, that every student does, gets hurt. Have you seen uh, the financial need grow? We have, and our, when I started back in 2003, our allocation from the state was 94.5, and this year it's about 77. So um, I appealed to the state for several years before we were granted another center, which we are so grateful because now we have 77 times two. But you know that, that funding has gone down. And it's not necessarily because the state has allocated less to us. It's because there are more students who are eligible for free and reduced lunch across the state. So that pot has to be split up more. But yes, the need increases. These kids that y'all work with, mm -hmm. were they uh, any of attending the Nervous Child Center? Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and we hope that we get more. You know, the, the challenge is with the Passport to Learning program and I think with Born Learning is to reach those people who aren't in school yet. Because most of the people who attended our Passport to Learning program did attend the Early Childhood Center. So while that's great that we're able to, you know, teach them these skills, they're kind of already getting it. So we hope that we can reach out more to parents who don't have their children in any type of preschool, either county or city, and that, um, that we can help them become kindergarten ready too. And, and when we wrote our proposal, we talked about several ways that we plan to engage the community and, and try to find more kids who aren't in preschool. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll be uh, brief again. My name is Josh Payne, and I'm the Youth Service Center Director. Um, the schools that I do serve it, are the middle school and the high school. Uh, today, I just want to talk about a few programs that I have coming up. Uh, this is my third year. Uh, my first two years, uh, just kind of rolled with the flow on several things. I'm starting to spread my wings more and more, adding pieces in. Uh, so I have two new programs that I, I've input this year. Uh, one just being that I just did over the summer, it was the next step camp, it was a transition camp uh, for sixth grade students. And as you guys know, sixth grade is a rocky time coming in from elementary school, kids are nervous, new classes, more students, they're back on the bottom again. You go from the top and you're back to the bottom. Uh, so the focus was to reduce students' anxiety and help them miss some of those potholes that they may run into and just help them be more prepared uh, so they can be more successful in middle school. Uh, so we did that program. It was a three-day program, um, heavily focused along with the counselor, the new counselor there, Mr. Morning. Uh, he was a great asset with that, as, as, as well as uh, Mr. Ryan Clark and Ms. Taylor. Uh, in that camp, some of the things that we did, we went on a, a full tour of the school. They got to meet some teachers. Um, they played different games. Uh, they had a family feud game where we got advice. We got advice from the outgoing sixth graders of what they would give to the incoming sixth graders. Uh, so that was some really interesting and good advice uh, that they got from them. We also talked to them about understanding the social scene. Of course, the social scene changes a lot. You have more peer pressures, you have more activities, more events, more clubs, all of those type of things. So we talked about that, uh, dealing with stress, anger, and peer conflicts. Of course, peer conflicts are through the roof in, uh, in middle school. 
and making good choices. We talked about those things. Of course, again, more peer pressures. Um, social media, we talked a lot about social media. And then we also got into the, uh, the side of it as well, of the academics. You know, being in school every day, uh, knowing how to get good grades, the student setting goals for themselves throughout the semesters, and then planning and preparing for the future. So those are kind of the, the overviewing uh, topics that we discussed with them. They had a lot of fun. We had about 65 kids uh, come out, which was pretty good for the first time. And hopefully those numbers increase as we continue to, to do the program uh, over the years. So that was a big success. Mr. Crumby actually got to come out when we were working on lockers. Uh, we worked on lockers there, and it was uh, it was a very entertaining. The students were very nervous. That's one of those things that make them really nervous. So we got to, to master those locks, did some races with that. Uh, so it was a good time. They really enjoyed it. Now um, my second program that I'm about to do is coming up in the high school, and it's something a little different to to get in parent getting parents involved. I know you know the parent involvement decreases as students get older. Uh, but the whole purpose of this event is to is to help parents to help them help their students navigate issues that they may face. Uh, so what we have on open house night, we're going to be doing different sessions. We're going to be doing three different sessions where I'll have um, Mr. Roland Gabbert coming in to talk about substance. Excuse me, he'll be talking about stress, anger, and peer conflict, dealing with the emotions. Um, you know, students dealing with academics, becoming really stressed out and what some of those things can lead to and steps that, that parents or guardians can take in helping their student deal with those issues. Uh, we're also going to have Ms. Stacy Bush from the REACH program. She's going to be talking about substance abuse and that's someone that uh, I work with closely on a regular basis. So she'll have a, a session about substance abuse and underage drinking. And then we'll have Mr. Scott Harvey coming back in. He actually did a presentation for us uh, back in February for the middle school that was that was wonderful and he'll be back again with us to talk about the world of social media um, so that'll be a good time if you, you guys want to come out and hear some of the speakers feel free uh, if you know any parents or guardians encourage them to come out to, to get some of those tools to help their students throughout the year so. mr payne would you say social media is the is possibly the number one the toughest thing to deal with as they transition from school to school. Uh, you know, I plays would, into peer, peers and all that stuff. I mean, I would say so, just because it, it comes around. It has so many different faces to it. Uh, with with students uh, picking on other students on social media, but then you also have the downside of it when when students make bad choices and they start to send the hey, send me a picture send me a picture of yourself and then you send that picture of yourself and then everybody in the school has it and then the student's going even further downhill at that point once everybody else has their hands on it. So that's a good one just to you know really in, in, inform those kids on how to use social media. No different than handing a kid a keys to a car that can't drive. Has no, no business driving. And the parents you know interaction in that social media as far as you know allowing them to use it and things like that. And we try to bring that information into the parents as well. Uh, just in the spring semester for the middle school, uh, we had a social media night for the middle school parents because a lot of them have no clue what's going on. Uh, so giving them the, you know, giving them the tools to, to have a better understanding to, uh, to nip some of those in the bud. You parent, parental notifications, this going into the settings, constantly checking up on them, seeing what kind of apps that they have going. Uh, just th those different types of things. Sure. Any other questions? Still have a need for uh, clothing, uniform clothing? Always, always have a need for the clothing. If you guys ever have any, feel free to uh, drop it by either the high school or over to the Family Resource Center. Even if it's regular clothes, uh, we do have accounts at Goodwill, so we can take regular clothes and gently used uh, shoes as well. Where if you guys drop it off to us, we take it there. We get so much sense to the dollar. And a lot of times, if we don't have the clothing in the center, then we'll give them a voucher to go there and get uniform clothing or other needs. Well, Josh, you're located in the high school. It's the best way to get there is to the main entrance at the high school. And Catherine, you have two entrances. You can go through the elementary school and to the office that way, or you have an outside entrance that yes. uh, 
just down from the main entrance on the left hand side there. I also have a middle school office that's right by the art room. Thank you. In the middle school. Right. Yeah. And I have a primary office also. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's no more questions, I appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent job, you all. Well, so get out of your getaway. His office is the old block. <laughs> there you go. That's right. <laughs> and Madam Chair, that's the last item I have in the superintendent's report today. <clears throat> okay. Very good report. Our next item is the tail survey. You all recall that we've been anxiously awaiting the tail survey. We've uh, discussed this numerous times uh, over the years. Uh, just a reminder of this acronym, uh, Teaching, Empowering, Leading, and Learning. is what our TEL survey stands for. Um, it's, it's something that our entire state uses. Uh, it's also used to, uh, across the nation. Uh, not every state uses this, but a lot of them do. Uh, essentially what we have here, uh, how do we rate ourselves? How do we see ourselves uh, doing in, in certain areas? And so. Of course, the, the survey uh, would be impossible to include absolutely everything. Uh, it does a fairly good job of, of asking some questions that we can take a look at and we can do a self-assessment uh, and, and as we look at continuous improvement, what can we do uh, to improve uh, in some areas? There are actually a few questions that probably could be improved and we could get better answers, uh, which I think that will probably be tweaked as time goes on. But, uh, in order to, to give us some consistent information, it has been the same uh, the last three times we've taken it. I will uh, refresh your memory that every two years, on odd school years, uh, is when this is available. Uh, and we will use this for, uh, you've heard of the CSIP, the CDIP, those things. This is where we get a lot of those needs assessments uh, right here through the, the PGIS and PPGIS. You, 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 you're familiar with uh, building the growth plans. Uh, and uh, this is a lot of where those come from, um, particularly in the PPGs. Uh, that data comes from this document. So um, <clears throat> what we want to do is uh, just take a look at this. Uh, we want uh, our schools to be uh, teacher-centered schools. And what do we mean by that? Well, uh, this research that we've been looking at, it, it says that, that schools that have high achievements have positive working conditions. And that's one reason it is, it is so important. Obviously, we talk about curriculum a lot. We talk about the standards that we teach, uh, but, but the working conditions are, are so important. So, you know, there's various reasons why you might get um, uh, uh, scored uh, one way or the other, uh, depending upon the time of the year. You know, a couple years ago, we, we were marked down uh, one of our lower areas in facilities and resources uh, were in the copying area. Uh, and one of the reasons maybe that uh, that, that happened, and to refresh your memory, was that we made a major change in, with our copying company, who, who we were leasing from, how we were doing it, and, uh, and put codes in on some of, of the copying machines. Well, that was done approximately in February. We took the survey in March. Uh, we didn't get a very positive result on, on copying, uh, or as positive as we, as we could have. Uh, so there's little things that affect that, which is kind of to, uh, those little things like that you kind of have to overlook and move on uh, and look at the big picture and then look, look for trends um, and uh, patterns that we see and, and, and look at how we can improve some things. So if you'll pull that up if you haven't already, uh, what I want to do is, no, actually uh, it should be at your place there, there should be a paper document that I think would make this a lot easier for you. And I have highlighted, it. I just circled a number or letter. Uh, on your page there that might be easier for us as we go over this. So the first thing that we had uh, was time. Uh, just uh, as you look at this, look at the very top uh, right hand and, and you'll see the, the first column has to do with the Kentucky average and then the second column has to do with the Bardstown Independent average. <clears throat> so some of these we'll look at and we'll look at the state average. Uh, there's another thing that you can do. You can go back and look at uh, 2000. Uh, 13, 2011, and also make some comparisons there. Unfortunately, this document doesn't give us that. We have to physically go back to that. Uh, but though, that's what your schools will be doing. That they will actually be going back, looking at, at trends from three-year uh, data, uh, and also comparing it to the state, some things of that nature. Did they have to give any kind of explanation why they rated? Make get no, over? no. Just it could be that the, the question was misinterpreted. Either way. Uh, might be a way that they that they would ask, and, and, and you know there were some responses on uh, 
whether you agree, uh, strongly agree, uh, disagree, or strongly disagree would have been the four choices. And you really just kind of see the, the, the agree percent here. Um, okay? Any I, ideas on, on uh, F? Teachers have sufficient instruction time, instructional time to meet the needs. Mm -hmm. of I do. Students. I've got a I've got an explanation for you. If on I that. just I, shut my mouth and let you get there. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's a thought. But, hey, we you know. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say one more thing. Uh, Mr. Roby's rushing me there, so I'm going to get there. But one more thing about this, I would like to say is, you know, we are using it for improvement. So one of the things I've challenged you with is, in, in uh, as we've talked about, that we were going to use one of these goals. Uh, on, on that I would identify and then we would take that goal and try to work to improve that particular goal so as we go through this I'll point the one out that that I would like to take a look at uh, obviously uh, you have as much say in that as I do if not more uh, so uh, feel free to if we go through here highlight the ones that uh, that we look at now I'm not going to look at all of them but the ones we're going to look at uh, I have circled there first of all the uh, class size there at the top uh, the very first one a, uh, you can see, uh, as far as the average for the state, uh, it's about the same. And of course, we all know that if we had smaller classes, uh, uh, we, all, we all feel that we could be more effective with a smaller number of students in a class. Uh, that's just one of those things that we have to deal with. How do we change that? Uh, we are not exceeding uh, the uh, maximum number. So, you know, what, what else can we do there? That might be one of those we can't do a lot about, just as an example. Now moving along, item B, um, teachers have time available to collaborate with colleagues. Well, that's certainly important, more important than ever now that we're doing and teaching the way that we're teaching. Uh, I think you're going to see an improvement in that area. Uh, we, we, we talk about our PLCs, and I know you're very familiar with that. Um, and uh, these groups of folks are usually uh, like a group of, uh, of uh, sixth grade teachers on the same team would be able to plan together, be able to plan uh, and so we would have the same standards in the classrooms and so forth and so on. Uh, I think that's only going to improve. Uh, that was at 62.7. And then let's, let's get to F. Uh, it says teachers have sufficient instructional time to meet the needs of all students. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that we uh, suspect are happening there uh, is that there has been a major push, as you know, uh, since 2011 uh, to push these new standards and the way we teach. Uh, I think it would, it, would, it would be safe to say that teachers feel overwhelmed, that there's been a lot pushed on them, and there's just not enough time to cover it all. Uh, will that improve? There's, there's, you know, there's things like uh, now we're starting to get a handle on all those new standards, but now we're getting ready to adopt social study standards. Uh, we're getting ready to look at uh, the new science standards, and of course we have the world language coming on. Um, the upper grades have been used to, to these standards, but the lower grades uh, are going to be looking at everywhere from, from kindergarten all the way up uh, on, on new uh, standards. So we feel that that's probably a, a reason for that. So they just feel like there's not enough time in the day to get all that done. Will that improve? We think it will over time. We want to be sensitive to that. Moving on to the next page there, to facilities and resources. Uh, on item A, uh, teachers have su uh, sufficient access to appropriate instructional materials. We think that's very important. We're at 89% there when you round that off, which is above the state average. Uh, moving down to D, teachers have access to reliable communication technology, including uh, phones, faxes, emails, technology pieces such as that. Uh, that's at 97% satisfaction. Uh, out of G, uh, the school environment is clean and well maintained. My goodness, 96.2%. Uh, we've got a uh, custodial uh, housekeeping and, and maintenance staff at second to none. I mean, that's 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 awesome news. So, you you know, you, we do identify some areas that we want to improve on. But we also are able to to identify some areas like this, and and we certainly plan on sharing this with those folks and and celebrating uh, this accomplishment. Uh, moving over to community and support, community support and involvement. Um, got item B marked there. Uh, the school maintains a clear two-way communication with the community, 89.1. Uh, I feel particularly good about that one because uh, uh, quite some time ago, maybe back 2007 or 8, along that line, uh, we began to talk about school to home communication. And uh, I'm pleased that that's at 89. Yes, we could, you know, we've got room to improve. We have 
uh, a few more points there that we could gain, but, but that's a concerted effort, and uh, that was due to this Board of Education's direction uh, to uh, the central office staff and the superintendent. So uh, congratulations to you for, for pushing that early on. The school does a good job of encouraging parent and guardian involvement, item C. According to the teachers, uh, we're at 89.3%. They say they, that we do a pretty good job there. Then take a look at F. Uh, parent, guardian, support teachers contributing to the success of students. Uh, that's down to 60, 69% there. Uh, but I don't want you as a board member to feel uh, overly concerned about uh, this being something that, that, that's way low. It is a little higher in the state. The 75% is certainly not uh, a great number. So it's something that we're, that we're uh, going to address. Uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, this has uh, been some time that we've been trying to address this. This may be one of the more, more difficult challenges that we have is uh, parental involvement. How do you increase that? Uh, you're going to be seeing some things here pretty soon. Uh, we just completed the monitoring process with the State Department. We were one of the lucky ones that were chosen. Uh, there's so many school districts every year that they, they look at things, and this is an area that we've been asked uh, to look at, and we have a very specific plan uh, that we're going to be uh, uh, implementing to, to do the best we can to continue to increase in that area. So uh, moving on to item H, the community we serve is supportive of the school. 88.2% uh, uh, was in agreement with that. Managing student conduct, uh, uh, this one you can see our, our numbers there. Uh, they're all fairly uh, medium numbers, I think. Uh, again, uh, this is a perception on, on from uh, staff on, on how it's dealt with, how, how conduct of students and how this one is dealt with. Uh, it's a, it's a, I think it's, it's acceptable. I think there's some area there where we can improve on. Uh, we will be addressing those uh, at the school levels on, on how we can do that. Uh, overall, uh, I do think uh, we're very excited about a program that we're looking at uh, uh, school-wide. We're, we're not sure where we are. We're in a bit of a pilot uh, state this coming school year. In 1516, we're going to be looking at a program called The Leader in Me. And I'm sure you've all heard of Stephen Covey, uh, his son Sean Covey, Stephen and Sean, uh, uh, before his death. They, uh, uh, put together a plan for schools and uh, it's a very powerful uh, program. Uh, we will be doing a bit of a, of a uh, I want to call it a pilot, but some schools will be doing a book study. Every, every new staff or every staff member has a copy of the book. A uh, certified staff member has a copy of the book this year, uh, The Leader in Me. And uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Downs, if you will remind me, I'd like to have a copy for each one of these board members as well. Uh, and so I, th I think you'll see uh, uh, it's all about accepting responsibility for your behavior um, is, is uh, the main part of that. I think you'll see this area uh, probably increase as we uh, are able to implement that program. Do you, do you think, oh, go ahead. Do you think um, the uniform policy for school uniforms feeds into that? Uh, yes, yes it does. It does. It's, it's more and more difficult, um, yes to uh, enforce that so yes that would be some of the you know if we didn't have the uniform policy I think we gain a lot from it um, but you know we're going to get marked down maybe as a result of it I was going to say you mentioned on the previous page community support and involvement item F do you think that directly ties into the managing student conduct I mean every every single one's in indicators of all the indi all the different uh, categories here this is the only one that we're below the state in every single one yeah. Uh, is that a key to improving that? Well, and, and I think it could be. And remember, these are perceptions, and and you know, it's it's the perception is reality, as they say, in, 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 yes. in a certain context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, absolutely, it sure could feed into it. You know, probably you make an excellent point. I mean, if I think if you look at every one of these areas, uh, it's uh, when I started, uh, I read the piece that the, our to you off the website on the tail survey that talked about that there was a direct correlation between uh, a positive working condition and high student achievement. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I think they all intertwine. They do, especially that one. It's a good point. As far as the dress code, 
parents ought to be very well aware of what they are, and kids should not walk out of the house if they're not dressed appropriately. Bottom line, that's the way I see it. If that's in a perfect world. <laughs> you know, sometimes we get our standards, we raise the bar. When things get so much better in classrooms, whether it's the student conduct, you, you expect more of them all the time. So perception is a reality, but at the same time, when they're acting very well, you expect them to be better. Yeah. So sometimes your perception, he didn't do so good today. Well, in a tough school system, the bar may be very low. And I think we have, a, uh, our bar here is set pretty high. And so sometimes that perception, they could yeah. do better, sure they could. We always can. But, uh, so sometimes there are some very conflicting responses here that, uh, but you're right, that just a perception of what they do yeah. in the classrooms. I think we have to look at the whole the whole document and uh, assess it from that standpoint, mm -hmm. not just one item or whatever. We're over on teacher leadership now on Q61.1, uh, and uh, a few of these I want to call to your attention. Teachers are recognized as educational experts. Uh, according to them, uh, we do recognize them, and that's 89% satisfaction. That's a pretty good level. Um, and uh, uh, some others uh, on um, B, teachers are trusted to make sound professional decisions about instruction. Uh, that's a good 91, solid 91% there. Uh, and D, teachers are encouraged to participate in school leadership roles, 92.4%. And then uh, uh, here we have Q6.5, uh, teachers have an appropriate level of influence on decision making in, in their schools. And that's a 63% or 64% when you round it off. Um, you know, the question comes back to us there that, you know, we have a, an excellent model for students, to have, for teachers to have input on decision making through the site based council making. So that's something we're going to try to take a look at and find out uh, maybe where the gap is there because there certainly is an, an excellent model uh, in place to, uh, to uh, help, help resolve uh, Q6.5. Moving over to school leadership. Um, most most all of these are are, are fairly positive. Uh, uh, they may uh, in some cases exceed the state average. Some cases they fall below. Um, but it, it, we, so I'll just let you kind of look at the school leadership part there. I'm not pointing anything out uh, in particular. Um, um, hang on one second. Maybe a little. No, that's not that's not the one. Uh, looking at the bottom of that, seven point three. Um, this is this could kind of be considered an overall summary of, of your school. If you kind of see the the uh, the uh, items uh, A through I, uh, we kind of looked at that and thought this would have been a really good item to have at the very end of the survey. Um, but you can kind of see uh, again those are 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 fairly positive. Uh, throughout, uh, uh, I would like to think that if, you know, leadership issues, the satisfaction is at 84 uh, percent. You just run down facilities and resources, we're at 90 percent uh, overall. The use of time in the school is 84 percent. Professional development's at uh, 85 percent. Teacher leadership's at 88 uh, percent. So these are these are pretty good numbers down the line. So fairly positive. Moving over to professional development. On uh, Q81 dot, uh, excuse me, Q81, Q8.1, uh, we will look at uh, item D. Uh, professional learning opportunities are aligned with the school's improvement plan. Now look at that. That's 96 percent. Um, you have a few concerns about some of those lower. This is one you I feel really super good about because think about what this is saying. Um, if you're trying to improve your school, in other words, you've identified areas that you want to be better at. Uh, what our teachers are saying is that the professional development that they receive is right on target. 96% satisfaction rate. Um, I think we had F, uh, decision making about professional development is guided by teacher evaluation system. Uh, we've talked to you a lot about the, about the new PEACHES uh, and we think this speaks volumes uh, about that program. It's, it's well aligned. You start seeing things coming together now. Uh, that's one of the things I think that we do gain from this, this um, survey. Um, then look at, um, I am skipping over quite a few here, but look at um, 
um, the uh, J. Uh, in this school, follow-up is provided uh, from professional development. And we're, at, we're right at 70% there. We think that's an area that we're certainly going to uh, be much more intentional about and uh, make a greater effort uh, to uh, remind folks when we do uh, review. Uh, obviously, the professional development that we're doing now has a lot to do with the curriculum, the way we teach, our standards. We really kind of feel like that maybe we are uh, reiterating what we teach in those professional uh, uh, development sessions, but maybe we're not doing it intentional enough. Uh, then looking at I, uh, J L, I mean, L. Uh, and this is one that I want us to consider. Professional development is evaluated and results are communicated to teachers. Uh, when, when we attend professional development trainings, and I think you, when I say we, this Board of Education the superintendent, we were usually given some sort of rating system uh, at the end of the session. Do you recall that? You complete that rating system. Uh, you probably don't get to see very often what those rates are, uh, but what we would plan to do at any professional development we do, we would provide a, a rating system and then we would convey that information uh, through uh, a faculty meeting or even through an email, a distribution email on, on what uh, the feedback was on that particular professional development. That would be an easy way for us to resolve uh, that and move that 66.7 to a much higher number very quickly. So that is the area that I would like for you to consider uh, uh, that I have uh, talked to you about uh, included in a growth area for us uh, to work on as a district. Okay, uh, moving on over to uh, Q9.1, uh, looking at item C, uh, teachers are assess, teachers use assessment data to inform their uh, instruction. That's 96%. Powerful statement. Very good stuff. And then F, teachers are encouraged to try new things to improve instruction. 92%. Another very very powerful statement. And then look at I. Folks, if we can get 99% of any group together at any one time and you can get a 99% agreement, something must be going on good. Uh, the curriculum taught in this school is aligned with Kentucky core academic standards. 99.4% say yes. And then I think our last two uh, on, the, on the back page there overall, uh, we're at 87%. Overall, my school is a good place to work and learn. At this school, we utilize the results from the TAIL survey as a tool uh, for school improvement, and 87% say yes on that. I agree with that. So, what have we done today? We've, we've, we've looked at this survey. We have a, a fair idea of, uh, of uh, some teachers' uh, thoughts. Uh, and uh, I'm going to also uh, say that this does include principals as well. Uh, but, but we have some idea of, of some things that we can look at, some things we're going to work on. Uh, what do we do with this? Each individual school had their own report. This report was made up and compiled from the five different schools. So they all have their own. They will be doing, uh, uh, going through this exercise uh, as school begins. They will be identifying some areas, creating some plans. Uh, some of those principals will be actually building growth plans off some of these on, on how they're going to be improving in those areas. Uh, and then at the end of the year, we'll review uh, their progress in those. So it's all about continuous improvement. And uh, uh, this is a uh, very important part of that needs assessment. So I feel there needs to be a comments column because you, if you get comments, somebody writes something low and they put a comment in there, at least you know why. Mm -hmm. And if it's if there's a trend with all each one of these different categories, then you know you can look at it and say, well, we can deal with this, we can't deal with yeah. that, or here's, and follow here's, up with them yeah. and let them know why they can or can't. Here, here's a thought on that and. Again, look for trends and patterns, and you know, you'll see a low number occasionally, and you really don't know why, but that's part of this process. Uh, they're going to be sitting down, they're going to identify, kind of like we have, we've identified one, uh, they're going to identify one or two or three, and then they're going to have this conversation, and they're going to, they're going to say, why did we score ourselves like this? And then those answers will come out, and that dialogue will take place. I think one of the reasons the comment place is not there, which is really a very good idea, this survey, there's really not a good time to take the survey. This survey usually comes in the month of March. Uh, we're in full gear getting ready for testing. Uh, so it's some consideration given to teachers on making it a, a, a little quicker uh, 
to try to get to it. It, it certainly is a, a very important uh, activity that they do, and it's. I wish we could carve out some time. And say this is part of your work day, and you have you know you have an hour with nothing else on your mind. Go complete this. And it just doesn't work out that way. It, 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 they're usually very rushed and trying to get everything accomplished. I will remind you, uh, and I failed to mention that, one of the greatest things about this is the state average uh, for completing the thing was uh, 89%, 89.3. We had 90.5, so 91% uh, participation. So we really pushed uh, from, uh, you know, to get folks to do that. In order to, to be able to score you, it had to be at least 55%. So you know, we really have, a, I think, a true assessment of, of, of what our folks think why they think that Mr. Rowe, uh, those comments would be helpful, but we'll get those comments as we start uh, uh, breaking these down and getting into them. Okay? To me, so many of these go back to um, school leadership um, and the managing student conduct is under there as well, so it goes hand in hand. I, I really feel because of those low numbers that we really can't just ignore that. Yes. And we, we could deal with it as a leadership mm -hmm. avenue. Right. And those are things we're going to, con to continue to do from a, from a district level, and that's the leader in me. I'm, I'm really excited. It, it, you know, programs do not solve problems. Uh, I, I'll be the first to admit that. And uh, you well know I, I, we don't jump on programs. And like a lot of school districts, uh, for next thing coming down the pike, they're on the wagon with it. We, we don't do that. Uh, we, we, we look at things, and that's why one reason we're going to take a – a year to look at this program. We're going to look at this book. We're going to uh, we're having a speaker come in here on um, uh, Thursday, Thursday, no, uh, yeah, Thursday morning of this week. Uh, we'll, uh, coming from the main office, uh, it's a pretty big deal to get that person here. Uh, they're going to be speaking to all of our uh, principals, uh, Mr. Shrewsbury, and uh, uh, so you know it's it, it's start a big process. And you're, you're right, that's where it starts. And I think that's our responsibility. Uh, with with our leadership to what is it? Thursday? It'll be it'll be Thursday, and, and you are invited if you if you'd like to attend. It'll be in this room at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. And if you'll come at eight thirty, I'll feed you breakfast. Right. I know he's coming now. <laughs> All right, that's the tail survey. And any other comments or questions? We'd be glad to address them. And again, we we have identified L uh, for your information, and I will I will write that up and send that back out to you if that's agreeable for you. Uh, if there are not any more questions or any more discussion about the tail survey, we'll move on to item number six: approval of fiscal year 2016 district funding assurances. We have Miss Blackman coming to share this with us, and we were. We were joking around a little bit this morning. She's going to assure you of the assurances. Uh, that's kind of what we've determined this is all about. So yeah, let's get your. Uh, it's 48 pages, uh, close to 400 questions. Truly, but yeah. so I'm sparing you that. I'm going to give you the down low on it. Um, if you look at what the big picture is of these assurances, it's an agreement made between our district and the KDE who manages uh, the title money and the extra funding that we receive. If you looked at the questions, you would see it's mainly to assure, agree, that we are doing best practices, that we are using a collaboration between teachers, administrators, and in some cases parents, uh, to determine how the title money and other money is spent to assure that all students learn at a high level. Now that's the skinny on it. But it has a series of questions making and procedures of what we do that's best practice to best spend the money. Uh, you have Title I money that we do know that is used to um, assure that our most disadvantaged or at-risk students are given the extra time um, the extra attention to break down barriers so that they achieve. Uh, you have um, a Title II money, which is teacher quality, 
uh, that with the flex funds that assures that our teachers are highly qualified and not just highly qualified but highly trained to uh, give the best of instructional practice to uh, our students. Uh, we have Title III, which breaks down the barriers for our children that come into our district that have the language barrier, that um, don't have the English command of the English language, and so we give special attention to them. Um, we do have uh, our new Title VI money that we are using that, in addition to the Title I, we're doing some things, especially with our Tier Three interventions for those students that are not making academic progress. Uh, to the level that we want them to. Uh, the homeless, we have money set aside for our homeless students, and believe it or not, we do have homeless families in this district. Um, and that uh, Catherine Webb is our coordinator, that she is, when we have someone register, she contacts them and provides uh, opportunities of help uh, so that they can come to school, that there's no need for them or any barrier for them to attend and to participate. Carl Perkins money, we know that's our technology money, our IDA money, a uh, series of things that we have to make sure that we are providing all the best services for our students, the nutrition um, that, uh, that we get to help provide the best lunches. And of course, we know we've had new uh, guidelines for the uh, nutrition, goes along with our health council. Uh, the flex funds, as you all have been talking about, um, gifted and talented. Uh, that is a series of questions, and again, it's 48 pages. Um, and you have heard Mr. Holsclaw talk about our monitoring visit we just finished up. That was quite an ordeal, thank goodness. They only come around every 15 years. So whoever does it, that I won't be here in 15 years. Lucky then. Uh, but it did. It was, it was a great process, I'm going to tell you, because um, you had to show evidence that you were doing everything in these 48 pages. And a great discussion. There are some things that we're going to improve on. And, um, but what you all are doing today is, is saying, yes, we, we, uh, we agree that, that the assurances have been done. And I assure you that the assurances have been done. You all have any questions or concerns? Okay. Thank you very much. So we need an approval for these uh, <coughs> funding issues. Yes, we do. We do need an approval. I did try to do all 48 pages. All right. All right. <laughs> You deserve some sort of an award for that. <laughs> so is there an approval? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Okay. So we got a second. All right. Yes, 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 yes. You've had, this, you've had access to this. That's fine. But I might uh, go ahead. You need a motion on that. I mean, yeah. you need a uh, vote. Is there any discussion? Any more questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. I'd like to follow up on uh, one thing Ms. Blackman uh, was when she was talking about the homeless student. Mr. Hood as our uh, DPP, uh, people personnel, and uh, w would you give us a definition of what the state uses for homeless because it's it's this way across the state, probably across the nation. Uh, there's situations like this. Uh, it's just, it, it, there's not a fixed, actually a fixed adequate service for them, not meaning they could be a lot of, a lot of different things. You could be staying in your uncle's home right. mm -hmm. uh, or your uh, a relative's home would be considered. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just what we might yeah. think as homeless on the street kind of thing. I thought, right. yeah. 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 This, this is, yeah. And move from home to home. Right, which right. Is a complication yes. for right. transportation yeah. to school Absolutely. and other things. Fixed and adequate are underlined. Fixed, yeah. I just wanted you to understand that, that that's a you know that's a common thing across, unfortunately, across the nation. So, all right. Short break. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Um, our next item 
is item num number seven, approval of the 2015-16 extra service schedule. Uh, this is our, uh, uh, typically our stipends uh, that we give uh, to uh, coaches, uh, uh, directors, uh, folks of that nature. We sell uh, all the extra ones up in the building. And so uh, um, Mr. Downs will be uh, uh, sharing with you a couple of uh, minor changes that we have on this, but this pretty much is intact. Uh, he's going to tell you about a couple, couple of uh, changes that we made on it. So the extra service, it's, it changed very little this time. I'll just bring up a couple to let you know what we did. The uh, sits coach was in every building, and that was a continuous instructional improvement technology system. And uh, we, we didn't ever really utilize that as we were getting into that system. And then now this system is beginning to be phased out a little bit from the state level. So uh, we took that off. And then uh, due to uh, uh, retirement, uh, the R coordinator position uh, had a little stipend to go with it, and we, and we took that off. Uh, and as you recall, last month you all um, approved an R chairperson position. Uh, the things that were there were there were three things that were added already on the schedule at the high school was an extra period, and this year the high school is going to have to need to have two more extra periods. And just a, a reminder, of what that is: there's a seven seven period day, and one of those periods is a is a planning period for that teacher. And so what they do is they end up teaching an extra class during that planning period, and they do their planning before or after school. And so we we pay a five thousand dollars stipend for that. And what it, what it saves us, it, it gives us a place for extra classes without having to hire a whole new position. So it's, it, it, we spend a little money, but we save a lot in doing it that way. So this year we, we're, we have an extra art class, we have an extra technology, industrial technology class, and we have an extra si uh, science class. And so and, and those for are your information, board members, those, those teachers agreed to do that. They choose to do it. Mm -hmm. No one is made to do that. Right. Just, just in case you want. And then uh, we added the gifted and talented coordinators uh, uh, stipend, and really it's just a shift because our um, gifted and talented coordinator is also nationally board certified, and we were paying that same money from another uh, another spot, so we added it to the extra service schedule to account for that uh, that two thousand dollars. And then the only other thing is that the middle school, uh, if you've ever been in the middle school in the morning, all their kids from the whole middle school gather in the gym and in the uh, breakfast area. And so we had, a, we had the extra staff to watch the breakfast area and we didn't have any extra in the, the uh, gym and the numbers were growing there a little bit and, and the principals try to cover that but a lot of times they get called out for various things in the morning as you can imagine and so Mr. Clark had, had asked for a little extra help in the uh, gymnasium in the morning. And so those were the only changes uh, that were made. All the others are the same. And so uh, we're, we're asking for your approval on the extra service schedule. Make a motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Our, our next item is approval of the 2015-16 extended time schedule. Okay, and this one, uh, just, just for your information, we did not make any changes uh, from the 14-15 uh, uh, school year. It's exactly the same uh, on the uh, extended time. So uh, we would ask for your, your approval in, in this area. Say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, our next item is approval of the 2015-16 substitute teaching salary schedule. And that's fine also. And the, the salary schedule this year did, did not change. Uh, just a reminder for you for our substitutes. Last year we tweaked it a little bit to make sure that we were in line with Nelson and Bullitt and in that same area because we have a lot of people that substitute in the same areas, especially with Nelson County. So we, uh, we mirrored their schedule, and so this year we're not asking for any, uh, any changes at all in, in the substitute salary schedule. So we ask for your, your approval of the schedule as it is. So moved. So moved. Second. 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 Second.
moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Our next item, item number 10, is approval of the first reading of the board policy update. And, and as a reminder to the board, we get these from the Kentucky uh, School Board Association. Uh, we, we belong to their, uh, their uh, policy revisions, and uh, we, we get them every year about this time. And uh, a reminder, I, I put this paper on, on your desk. So just a reminder, there's 10 areas that these policies come from, uh, and depending on the number that they start with, uh, like all personnel is an old three. So uh, that, that's the way you, you kind of interpret that. Uh, what, what I'd like to do is just call your attention to two or three uh, that, that are in the pocket. Uh, some are recommended, some are legal. Of course, the legal ones you, you automatically have to do. Uh, the, the recommended or the... Is that the different co color coding? Is it legal versus recommended versus... What, what, what's the, the, the color is just how they strike, uh, what, they, what they add in and what they strike out. <coughs> just various colors in the document, I was wondering if they were... No, I, no it, it, doesn't, it doesn't go on them. On the different policies, just how they how they take things out, put things in. Uh, the first one I'd like to call it to your attention uh, briefly is is 3.13214. I don't know how you're if, if you can pull that up very quickly, but it's it's 03. It has to do with the use of personal cell phones, telecommunication devices. Everybody, have you, everybody found it? It's on page 175. That might help. 66. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Creature hang. Is it certified in class? It's on the certified one. Okay. Certified 0313. It's 166. Oh, 3.232140, so page 166? Is this referencing certified or classified? It's certified. Okay, so then it is back on 166. There, there's, one for, there's one for certified, one for classified, and also one. It's the same policy. And then one for students, actually. What are we looking for? We're looking for certified. 03132140. That's the number for certified. Yeah, Got it? Yeah. Okay, I'm already doing better than last year, because last year you didn't have a red one. The blue. All right. And I, I just want to bring your attention to this one, because this is a very sensitive area. Uh, we, you can get into trouble real quick, uh, confidentiality, uh, when some uh, a staff member takes and, and either records uh, a student uh, uh, doing something, a uh, special needs stu student doing something, and the next thing you know it's on uh, social media. And so uh, we want to make sure that our staff knows that this will, uh, this is something that we cannot do unless it's approved beforehand by the administration, by the principal. Uh, so even though this was recommended, I thought it was a, is one that we actually should have in there uh, with our certified and our classified, stu uh, and also it falls in with our students also. Well, but so, the parents have come in for a, a, a play. No, it's, it's got a, it, it has a provision in there about uh, events like ball games and, and, and plays and those kind of things, those are, that's okay. But, but during the school day, when, when it's not a social invited in event, then uh, unless you have permission, you cannot film or record students. Let me give you an example of what we read. Uh, uh, the way it looked was, uh, and, and this was not in our school district, this was the example given, uh, the teacher had a a child that had not been very successful in an area and suddenly they were and in a very positive thing she she videoed it uh, and then she uh, uh, sent that out to a family member who then placed it on uh, a social media and there you go but it wasn't necessarily the parent but it was meant to be a positive thing but it, so yeah. these are the kind of things uh, you know they're usually not they're not reckless type of you know hateful mean-spirited type activities typically they could be but they're not yeah. so we just want to make sure that we call attention to it yeah. beforehand when we go over these new policies with our staff to make sure that we are very aware of that because of the confidentiality issues with it were you addressing duties to the building 
Yeah, he asked about that. And, and, and if you had a, uh, let's say you had a, a, a play where you invited the public into it, then then this this policy doesn't restrict them from from filming in a, in a big group. But if the visitor was in a classroom. Now, if the visitor was in a the classroom, they would need to they would need to know that beforehand, and the principal would need to uh, relay that to them. Because you know, they, if they were just say they were just coming to look at a, a, a observe a teacher, and then you know film the the entire classroom when they. You just can't you just can't have that so we want to call attention to it just because of confidentiality especially with our, 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 our special needs population and then we have some students that aren't allowed to be photographed and those kind of things and they have to be very sensitive to it and that's why i wanted to call your attention to that particular one uh, i'll do one more and just so it's it's 3.18 it's in certified uh personnel tracy you have a Page number. 169, 168 is where it begins. Well, no, 167, so it's the next page over. <laughs> Sorry. And it's certified personnel, and it's on evaluation, and I just want to call your attention because this is our PGIS, Professional Growth and Effective System, because it goes into effect full blast in every, uh, every district in the state. So all the pilots are over for that. Uh, for the regular teachers, and so it goes into effect. I just wanted to show you, show you that one. Um, we added a few um, of our own. They're, they're, they, they fall in a pocket like this. I'm, I'm just going to tell you about them. I don't, you don't necessarily need to look them all up. But this one, everywhere we we had a tobacco policy. Anything that had to do with tobacco, we added the vapor and the alternative uh, nicotine into it as being something that we, we, we don't do. Uh, because it wasn't addressed in our policy, so we added that in there uh, to our own policies. The other thing is our, our policy did not have our school district the way we have like K-1-2 or building set up, so we fixed that in, in this one also. Uh, so there were just a couple in there that I wanted, to, wanted you to see. And this is the first reading, so what I would encourage you to do is uh, take a look at these in, 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 over the next month, and if you come back and have any, uh, any uh, concerns about any of them, especially if you look at the recommended ones, and, and you may think that maybe we might not tackle those at, at this time, uh, just let me know. So we have to prove the, we have to prove the first reading. Okay. Is there any more discussion or question? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Item number 11 is approval of the expansion of our child care facility lease. Uh, I've uh, asked Mr. Downs to maybe explain. I, I gave you some <coughs> board notes that kind of gave you an idea of what we're looking at. Uh, we're expanding this program a bit. Uh, the thing I want to remind you is that, uh, again, child care is, and it uh, has its own uh, funding uh, based on those uh, fees that we uh, do collect for daycare. And so this, this expansion is not going to be general fund money, but it will be daycare money. Mr. Downs, if you'll share some details with us. Okay, and as you, you may remember in August of last year, we uh, got into a lease with the, the um, uh, for the property out on 859 Pennsylvania, which used to be a daycare uh, just up to a, a, a year ago. Uh, there are three buildings on the property. We used the one with five classrooms in it was the first lease that we, uh, that we asked for, and uh, it, it's worked very well uh, too. And one of the things parents really like about it is when they pull in, they know exactly where the child is in that building. Uh, when, a lot of times when we, we use the elementary, we use the whole elementary. Uh, we may be in the gym, we may be in the library, we may be in the computer lab, and so it was kind of a search for that. So, uh, but over the over time, the um, bigger classes coming through have kind of ate up some of the rooms in the elementary, which caused us to to move around a little bit. And then also, uh, you approved the grant for the snoozling room here recently, 
And so we used to uh, reading lab in, in the elementary was now going to be the snoozling room. So the reading lab moved to the basement of the elementary. And that's also where one of the daycare rooms were. So that also that made us have a need for a little bit more room. Um, we serve um, 220 students in daycare. Of course, not every day, but over the course of, of, of time, we serve 220 students. So what we're asking to do is add this building to the existing lease, and the way it will work, it will mirror the same uh, funding um, lease payments exactly. The, our, our first lease runs out in two more years, so this lease will run out with it in two years, so we'll be able to examine our, our, our options at the end of that. So it will mirror those two things. Uh, on our pre-registration numbers, they were uh, really up and they jumped a lot in July, which will uh, also will necessitate a, a, a little more room to accommodate those. When, when we open this new building, we'll have uh, enough room to add about 24 more students if we needed to. And the, and the ones that we already have pre-registered are enough to take care of the lease. And so that I think we're going to be in good shape uh, by taking on this new building. Uh, it's in great shape. Uh, we, we've already taken a look at it. Uh, it's going to take minimal amount to get it up and running. Just to refresh your memory too, the board members, that this is down the street from the early childhood building, uh, about a half a block or so uh, on the right hand side. It's been, it's been a very convenient location uh, for us. And it will house, those two buildings will house three and four year olds, K1 and 2. So all that area out in Templin will use that daycare uh, here. We'll have uh, our third and fourth grade will be in the Tiger Den and those two built those two rooms on the end. And then our fifth and sixth grade will occupy the one room that we have left in the basement uh, for after school. So uh, it, it, it will it will work well. So the parents in those will be familiar with those buildings and won't have to won't have to worry about crossing over. I only had two things. Uh, one was. It looked like there was a significant, also a 25 percent increase in the lease after the first period. That yes. was a pretty substantial uh, yeah. number for well, a percentage and, and, increase. And, and just, re I wish I had that copy. It's on my desk. But uh, last year when we did this, it was uh, the lease started out that way. We got a really cheap price to start with, and then it slowly increases. Uh, and that was part of the deal. Yeah, a year two and year three go up. A typical square foot. Do you recall uh, what daycare was? And we were we were getting I think the first year we were getting at four dollars, and typical it was like eight to nine dollars. Yeah, and we do, and, and part of the reason for having this stone was that there were some things that needed to be improved, and they didn't really want to. We were going to put that down, and so we wanted the lower the lease payment to start off with so until we got it to market. It went to like four, five, and seven. Something right. like that. Right. Which brings me to my next point on Exhibit B, 246 page on the bottom there. Uh, just a def difference of definitions. In the lease, it's we're, we're, it's defined as the lessee and the lessor. Mm -hmm. But on here it says tenant. That being us, are making these improvements? There, there's, there are certain things that we uh, that we will make improvements on. Well, the major things, the heat and air and those kind of things, the, the landlord will be responsible for those major items. Uh, and but on Exhibit B, uh, we are responsible for those. It's my understanding. But replacing all the existing carpeting, and I mean, those are, I mean, they're not big time items or yeah. anything. But it just the yeah. definitions are different there. Well, I, and I think it works. And again, we get this deal because of the uh, square footage. Some of this stuff we could do a lot cheaper than if we had to pay for it to be done. Right. So we're actually making money on that on that okay. uh, sliding scale. And we're talking about carpet in this one. All it needs is clean. Joel, Mr. Downs, it does say that. On the, on the uh, heat and air? On the exhibit B. If you hear, come here and take this copy. I'm sorry. You'll be up with Mr. Stone. Okay, and, that, and those things in exhibit B, we did last year at the other. Well, this is for the previous building. It's the previous building. That's what, I'm that, not sure why we had that included. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's there, but this is all, all those things that we that are on this list right here in Exhibit B, we did already in the building last year. This new building's not going to need <clears throat> not going to need any of this. Okay. Um, I said I'm not sure what that's. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yes, we probably should indicate that Exhibit B is, is not part of this. Make a motion to approve. Okay, with uh, the necessary changes as an Exhibit B, is it? We're going to make changes in Exhibit B. Or you can say we're going to not include Exhibit B. We'll let the minutes show that. All right. All right. And we'll make sure that that. I don't know if I can. I'll take a motion to approve with that Exhibit B. <laughs> is there a second? Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Um, our next thank you. I think I'm done. Thanks. Yeah, I <laughs> Our next item is approval of the BG4. Uh oh, Morristown High School we project. <laughs> well, the, the good news is a yeah. BG1 is beginning and a BG4 is the end. Right. Yeah. So uh, this is really good news that we're able to uh, finally be able to uh, bring this to the conclusion. So, Mr. Hood. Sure yes, it, it has. Uh, it seems like it's taken some time to get everything right, and that's because we wanted to make sure everything was right before before we let them get out. Of, before we let them get out of here, and what I was waiting on more than anything was this binder that gives us the 20-year warranty uh, in hand. And once we receive that, uh, then we made final payment. Uh, now has been made to Go Hagen. I believe at the maybe at the time it had not been, but it has now. Uh, final payment which we were holding until everything was to our liking um, which has been done uh, by our architect and also uh, Trimco who gave us the warranty so they have they have signed off on everything um, because we were a little concerned about some of the roof penetrations and some of the flashings uh, we made sure all of that was taken care of um, and they checked and double checked and they do not give 20 year warranties unless they're for sure that that it's going to be good. So I feel good about the uh, roof in the high school, um, asking for approval for a BG4, which does close out that project. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Any opposed? Those 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 you're exactly right. Um, item number 13 is personnel, resignation, and transfer. Just like to make you aware of that page of information there. You can take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Any questions, we'd be glad to address them. That's all I have now, Chair. Sure. Um, we have uh, approval of the leave of absence request. I do have two of those. I have a maternity and a medical uh, request for Family Medical Leave Act. Um, everything is in good order here. But to be uh, clear on that, one of those is an extended disability uh, leave. The other one is Family Medical Leave. Um, we can approve those together. Can we? We do can. I recommend. I need a motion to approve these two items. So okay. recommend. <laughs> a motion and a second. You got a motion and a second. All at once. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone put it. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye seven. So we found we have our site-based decision-making council minutes. Uh, is there anything else that needs to be brought before the board? We need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. I said that. That's good. Moving now. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. We are adjourned.